Avid listeners. Thanks again for tuning into Sin's Workshop. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Today we're going to be talking about Cupid's Match. This is a young adult fantasy um, romance. A little more like paranormal, supernatural romance that brings Greek mythology uh, into the modern realm. Now this is not something new. We see Greek mythology retellings, Greek gods reinterpreted in modern media a lot. In fact, this book was reminiscent of that TV show Valentine. It only lasted a season. I personally loved it, but you know, I tend to like a lot of shows that only last a season. Valentine, The Gates, leave off on cliffhangers, and then there's no resolution, and I get no sort of uh, closure which pisses me off, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Cupid's Match did remind me a lot of Valentine and just the premise itself. Now, this was a book that was sitting on my digital library. It was a digital arc from NetGalley and it was sitting on my shelf for quite some time actually, um, like a while. <laughs> a while, I, I hate to say it, it just kind of got lost because I get so many digital arcs. This is why I like physical arcs more. Um, but when I get so many digital arcs, I just kind of need to prioritize some more than the others. And some, unfortunately, do get a little lost in, in the throng of things. It happens, you know, I'm only human. <laughs> but it did get a little lost. It did get back shelved. Um, and that's kind of unfortunate because I was, I actually really did like this book. Um, and I kind of wish I'd read it sooner. So it starts with Lila, Lila, and she is at the Cupid matchmaking, um, service. You know, she's at their office building. She, what she wants is she wants them to stop harassing her because she has a boyfriend and she doesn't need to be matched with anyone. Now she thinks this is just a dating service. She has no idea that it is actually being run by actual Cupids and has no idea that it was funded by Aphrodite her herself. So she just goes there and she's like, look, whatever this is, can you just leave me alone? And then Cal comes and tells her like, look, you've been matched with Cupid, the Cupid. We cannot let that happen. And she's just like, why? You know? So the number one rule of the Cupid matchmaking service is Cupids cannot be matched. So if you are turned into a Cupid, your goal is to, you know, match soulmates and whatnot and so forth. But they themselves cannot be, be matched or else, you know, they'll feel the wrath of Aphrodite Venus. Um, I like that. I think a lot of the times when we think of Aphrodite, we kind of think of the Hercules legendary journey version of her, you know, kind of flighty, kind of hippy dippy, you know, you think of love, you just think of, you know, love, you think of kindness, right? I think we forget that love can be cruel as well. Um, and you see that a lot in this novel. If you look at Greek mythology, Aphrodite is not one of the kindest gods. Um, if you are actually looking at tales of Greek mythology following her, she's vindictive, she's malicious, she's cruel. Yes, she's the goddess of love, but that doesn't mean she's nice. <laughs> and I like that we are seeing this version of her brought to life in this tale, in this story. She is very sadistic. She's very cruel. And I like that we're seeing this version of her because it's something different, you know? It's something that's more in line with Greek mythology. And I like that it was brought to life here because it does back up that number one rule. You know, no one wants Aphrodite to come back. You know, no one wants her to go back to being the CEO of her company because she is cruel and vindictive. They're all just like, okay, no, 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 no. 
we do we don't want her back so yeah, do not break this rule because if you break this rule she's going to come back and Cal and the entire Cupid matchmaking service they want to avoid that they want to avoid the return of Venus Aphrodite so she goes back to school, Lila, and all of a sudden Cupid's there. He is enrolled and it has turned her life completely upside down. Again, I did like this uh, for this reason only. There was no insta-love, insta-attraction in the novel. We, as readers, know they're supposed to be soulmates or so we're made to think. Um, again, Everyone who works for the Cupid matchmaking service is called a Cupid. So there is some instruction in there. You think maybe she'll, she's going to fall for Cal. Maybe Cupid. You're just thinking, is it really the Cupid or just a Cupid that she's being matched with? You know, the language is funny there. And it's open for some interpretation on the reader. So it's interesting to see which way the plot is going to go because you're not really sure. There's a lot of misdirection, like I said, and I like that misdirection because it keeps you guessing, it keeps the story going, and it stays away from those classic tropes. You know, there's no love triangle trope here. There's no insta-love trope. I like, I don't, again, I don't mind those tropes in stories as long as they're written well and fit within the story context. You know, The Hunger Games has a love triangle in there. It's okay because it takes a back seat to the overall plot of the story, you know? That's just an example. So I don't mind love triangles as long as they are not detracting from the story or come off as cliche. In this case, they don't. Um, and the same thing with the insta-love trope. Again, I don't mind it as long as it just goes in line with the story, but it tends to come off as cliche more often than not, um, and it tends to detract the reader from the overall plot line. Again, not a deal breaker as long as the story is written well. Here, I like that the author decided to stay away from both of those tropes and cliches. There's a nice development for the romance. There's a lot of animosity because Lila's like, I don't, I don't believe in Destiny Fate. Like I have a boyfriend, so she's fighting against it because I don't think anyone likes the idea of a predetermined um, fate destiny because it's like, well then. What control do we really have over our own lives? So she's fighting against that. So she really doesn't like Cupid. She's like, because of you, my entire life is getting upended. Like, just leave me alone. And I'm okay with that because it really just adds some depth to Lila as a character. You get to see her relationship with her boyfriend, with her best friend, with her father. You see that she's still recovering from the loss of her mother to cancer. So you're seeing all the, in the intricacies of what she's feeling and how her feelings develop, especially for her supposed soulmate. So I like that between her and Cupid. It's not just insta-love. It is more of animosity. Hey, we're going to be reluctant friends because... The Cupid matchmaking ser service really does want us to get together and have sent assassins to come kill one of us. <laughs> to actual genuine friends, to romantic, um, to, you know, the romance aspect. There's a nice build in the story, and it goes in line with the tension, with the rising pace, with the rising tension, and the pace, which keeps the story going and keeps the momentum up, and I really did enjoy that overall. I think... It does offer the reader a nice entertaining story. Now, I also know that this is the first of a trilogy. Um, I don't know that I'm gonna read books two and three because I think the story did have a nice solid conclusion. I think it was written really well. I've read the synopsis for two and three and I'm not 100% sold. Um, 
but I think this story was interesting enough that, you know, maybe one day I will read the other two, but I think it's good enough that it holds on its own. It doesn't need a second book or a third book. It holds well on its own. It has a nice solid conclusion to it. It does leave the door open if the author wants to expand the universe here that, and expand on the different characters, but it's not necessary. It's not like this book leaves off in a cliffhanger. So, and that's one thing I hate. I hate starting a series, and then even if I don't like it, I'm just like, ugh, put myself in the cliffhanger, and now I need to see how this plays out. So I end up reading the second one, and sometimes, you know, I'm just, I'm continuing to be disappointed. Other times, I'm just like, oh, thank God, the writing has improved. So, you know, I, I leave it to your discretion if you want to read the full trilogy on Wattpad. Uh, right now, only book one has been published physically, to my knowledge, may, not books two and three, so, you know, if you want to read it, go ahead. If you don't, then don't. I think Cupid's Match is entertaining enough. It does also bring in other mythological figures like Pandora and the Minotaur and Medusa near the end um, to battle <laughs> Aphrodite, and I think that that's, like, so cool how she's brought to life these mythological figures in such a really unique way, honestly. I thought that was really cool, how she did it. It's not what I was expecting, and I like when authors do something that goes in line with the story, but it's still unexpected. I personally enjoy that. So I'm gonna give Keepage Match three and a half out of five star. Not quite four, because it didn't quite blow me away, but it was good. I did find it entertaining. I did find it um, fun to read. It was a quick read as well. Uh, there's really good character development. There's really good character dynamics. And I love the overall relationships between these characters. So, three and a half out of five stars. If you want to go ahead and purchase the book, please remember to purchase the book from your local bookseller or online book retailer. I will include links below to Bookshop, which will give you a list of independently owned bookstores near to you if you want to shop small. As well as if you want to purchase off bookshop.org it will donate a percentage of that sale to the local bookstore of your choosing. Don't forget Barnes & Noble as well ships across the country. And so does Books A Million. So please just support your local booksellers versus Amazon. Um, because, you know, nothing beats a good bookstore, in my opinion. Independently owned, chain owned, I mean... I personally love walking through bookstores. You know, I work at a bookstore and I love walking, doing my job and organizing books and discovering new reads and being like, ooh, adding this to my list, ooh, adding this to my list. That's just me, I'm crazy that way. <laughs> so yeah, um, if you wanna go ahead and purchase, please remember to purchase from your local bookseller. On that note, I hope you all continue to support me by liking this podcast and subscribing to it. You can also become a supporter on Anchor FM, my recording platform, for just 99 cents a month. Links to everything will be in the description. Have a great rest of your day, everyone, and as always, happy reading.